Hello and welcome to this video on public projects. Interestingly, a lot of the enterprises that are doing DevOps within their organizations are creating products for customers. When you create products, you create packages or potential APIs which may carry documentation. But because there is no flow within these projects to share that information, these customers end up having to ship their packages or the documentation as doc files or the packages as zip files to customer, which kind of breaks the whole flow of DevOps. Now, wouldn't it be great if there was a way of just giving your user uh, a link uh, to download the artifacts anonymously without first having to give them access to your Active Directory or permissions within your team project? Now, this workflow is very different from the traditional open source workflow that we're used to. You know, if I take the example of GitHub, you know, you create your code repository there, you open source the code, you're almost welcoming people to come in and contribute to your repositories. Whereas in this case, you as a customer creating the code are still creating the code for yourself, managing the code yourself, but there's certain aspects or artifacts that you want to open up to your customers. And this is exactly the use case that Public Projects delivers to. Now, we're gonna go through a demo with Public Projects, briefly cover uh, some of the use cases where public projects is a great fit. And we're going to talk about some of the advantages of using public projects within Azure repos. All right, let's flip right into the demo. All right, so first up, um, let's look at the GitHub repository for Visual Studio Code. Now, Visual Studio Code, as you know, is open source and has been for a good couple of years now. And during that time, it's probably become one of the most popular repositories on GitHub. People would... Um, contribute heavily uh, in the open source to VS Code, and sometimes they just want to see how VS Code compiles their builds, you know, kind of does their releases. So people are interested in seeing the build pipelines and the release pipelines. But because the builds and the releases are done in other products that customers don't have access to, that information is hidden away from them. With the use of public projects now, um, VS Code is able to use Azure pipelines to create its builds and releases and give the customers access to see the builds and release pipelines without the fear of them making changes to those pipelines. Let's see what the experience looks like. Within the context of the uh, GitHub repository, if I click on the batch here for Azure pipelines, I can come in into the context of the pipeline itself. And now just to prove that I have anonymous access, I can take this link and open it in a new browser wherein I'm not logged in. And you can see that I can access all the information. I can sort of come in and see <clears throat> all the steps in the pipeline, click through each of the steps, see exactly what's going on. Now, the advantage with Azure Pipelines is, is it's cross-platform and it supports all Mac, Linux, and Windows. So VS Code team is able to use one platform for doing its builds for all the three platforms, which again means it simplifies their work and also provides customers the ability to come in and see all the pipelines for all the platforms in one place. Now, going back, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the GitHub Marketplace and one of the offerings that's been recently made available. So if you go within the GitHub Marketplace and you search for Azure Pipelines, you will see that for GitHub customers that are doing open source projects, Azure Pipelines is basically free. Once you agree to use this, uh, you get 10 free parallel jobs for public repositories with unlimited minutes. And as Azure repos and Azure Pipelines support Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, you can kind of imagine that you pay literally nothing for being able to use pipelines for all of these platforms for up to 10 concurrent jobs uh, for unlimited minutes. Now, moving forward, I'm going to talk about another use case. Now, this use case is actually from the Microsoft engineering team who are using the public proje projects to publish their roadmap of the product. As you can see, again, if I take this URL and I bring it into a different browser where I'm not logged in, I 
I can still see all the work items um, in the roadmap um, from the MS Engineering team. Now, the benefit, of course, is the MS Engineering team is able to communicate their feature plans and their feature, uh, future roadmap uh, to customers directly from within their own product uh, and gives customers the ability to drill in and get more details on the work items and over time see the discussions that the product team is having, having within the context of the work items, being able to see when these work items will actually deliver, what iterations they're mapped out to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and most of all, the biggest benefit is being able to see the history uh, as changes are made in the plans uh, for these specific work items. So what does it take to have a, a public project? Let's come back into the context of our Geeks organization. Uh, the public project is a organization level setting. So you need to have organization administration rights to sort of enable this functionality within your organization. You can do so by going into the org settings, navigating into the policy. Um, you can see that there's a setting here at the bottom saying, allow public projects. Now, I have enabled this uh, policy for this organization, but you as an organization, if do not want to allow your uh, developers to use public projects, then you can explicitly set this to false. Now that I have enabled this, I can control the public behavior of the projects project by project basis. Let me navigate into the project section here and look at, say, for example, the Parts Unlimited project. Within the Parts Unlimited project, we can see that the visibility is currently set to private. Let me change that to public and save the changes. At this point, Parts Unlimited has become a public project. Let's take the Parts Unlimited project URL and open it in another browser in unsigned in mode and see whether we're able to access it. And we can. Now, I figure at this point that I may not be ready to open up all parts of the Parts Unlimited project to uh, anonymous access. Therefore, Azure DevOps gives me the option to selectively enable and disable certain services. Maybe in this use case, all I really want to open up for customers is the code repository. I may not want to open up the boards, the pipelines, and the other aspects of the projects. I can control that by going into Parts Unlimited, navigating into Settings, and disabling the services that I don't want. And as you can see now, the only service that's left uh, publicly opened up is the repo service. Now, if within Parts Unlimited, I wanted to use other services, optionally, there's, um, I could go in and create another team project to maintain the other aspects that I want to keep privately and only open up specific parts of the project publicly that, that I'm happy to open up. Um, fairly trivial. Uh, to do, but from a product point of view, it seems almost like a revolution. You know, I look back 10 years when we had the TFS product and it was all focused towards enterprises and keeping the data secure and confined within their own premises. And then came the days of VSO, VSTS, where customers were more happy to go online, you know, in the cloud offering and keep their data there. And we're at a point where customers are creating products that they, you know, don't want to develop in the open source, but yet have the ability to give their customer uh, visibility into. And this um, public project is the perfect solution for that. So if you haven't tried public projects, go in, have a play, and uh, feel free to provide the, the product team uh, with your feedback. <laughs>